Hi everyone, it's Casey. I'm so excited to be here again with you. And what is it that I'm doing here again? Let's see. Well, we have the stuffed animals, and we have this cooing little baby, and we have me talking to you. So it must be another story time with the Young Gardeners Program. Welcome back! I'm so excited to be here to read one of my favorite books about some of my favorite things. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you some hints. That's right. These things have six legs. They have antennae. And some people think they're creepy crawly, but without these things, oh, life would be incomplete. In fact, we wouldn't even be here. They're that important. Can you guess? That's right, insects. And today we're reading a book about one of my favorite insects. The ladybug. I know lots of us already love ladybugs. And this book is a very special book because it's nonfiction, which means everything in it is true. It's about true things. It's a science book. This one's called The Ladybug and Other Insects. It's a scholastic first discovery book. And you'll have to forgive my pronunciation, but The Ladybug and Other Insects is created by Garimard Junès and Pascal de Bourgogne and illustrated by Sylvie Perrault. Let's get started. And as usual, if you hear my daughter cooing and hollering, just go ahead and join her. This is a ladybird beetle. We usually call it a ladybug. The ladybug is an insect. You already knew that. Like all insects, the ladybug has six legs. Ladybugs are often red with black spots. The common ladybug has seven spots. Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And let's go ahead and count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, insect. Oh, the underside. Like all insects, the ladybug has six legs. There are many kinds of ladybugs, and they come in many different colors. Look at all of those different kinds. The ladybug has two pairs of wings, hard red outer wings that protect the transparent wings that the ladybug flies with. Now check this out, look at this page. Like all insects, the ladybug has three body parts. The legs and wings are attached to the middle part. That middle part is sometimes called the abdomen or the thorax, depending on the kind of insect. With its little claws and jaws, the ladybug captures aphids, another insect which is its favorite food. Oh, look at them. The ladybug is a hunter. Oh, look at all those aphids. Oh, that ladybug is in hog heaven. One ladybug can eat as many as 50 aphids in one day. Near the ladybug's eyes are two antennae, or feelers. The ladybug uses these to sniff out the insects that it likes to eat. And in the spring, male and female ladybugs mate so the female can lay eggs. Look at those antennae. Look at that face staring at you. Can you 
Can you find the antennae? Where are they? Ah, that's right. Boop. A week later, after they mate, the female finds a leaf with many aphids on it so she can lay her sticky yellow eggs. Why do you think she picks a leaf that has lots of aphids on it to put her eggs? So that when the babies hatch, they have food to eat right away. That's so smart, Mama Ladybug. They emerge from the eggs, and look what's waiting for them. When they hatch, tiny black larvae emerge. They don't look at all like ladybugs, and the larvae feed on aphids. Now take a good look at what the baby ladybugs look like. They don't look a thing like the red and black ladybug. They don't look like a beetle yet. They have six legs, but they're long. I remember one time, a class that I taught years ago, they told me that they thought ladybug larvae looked like little alligators. Do you think they look like little alligators? All I know is now we all know what they look like. So if you see these out in the wild on a leaf, you don't have to panic. You don't have to say, oh my goodness, what's that tiny alligator doing? You can say, I know what that is. That's ladybug larvae. Everyone will know you're so smart. A young larva eats and eats. As it grows, it sheds its too tight skin. And when it is time to change into a ladybug, the larvae attaches itself to a leaf. Its old skin splits off once more, and now the larva is called a pupa. The skin becomes a hard, dry shell, and inside the shell, a ladybug is forming. Look, this is one of those special pages. Oh, look, you can see the ladybug shell forming. It's not red yet, though. What color is that? Yellow. About a week later, the ladybug pushes out of its shell. Its body is soft and yellow and damp. Soon its outer wings become dry and hard and turn red with black spots. So they change with age, just like you. Some birds think that the brightly colored ladybug looks good to eat. They soon find out that they are wrong. When a bird attacks, some ladybugs turn over, become very still, and excrete a bad smelling liquid from their legs. Now look, do you see that? They're oozing that liquid from their legs that stinks so that the birds will leave them alone. Brilliant. Uh-oh, what do we think this woodpecker is doing? What do you think it might be trying to do? Look for some lunch. Look. It is what's inside this tree. Ladybugs. Many ladybugs hibernate during the cold winter months. They find a warm, safe place in the hollow of a tree or under a pile of leaves. They nestle together and sleep until the cold weather is over. And then, when spring arrives, they come out to look for a mate. Let's look at some other kinds of insects. Ah, oh, look at that. This black one is called a scarab beetle. Scarab beetle, that's right, baby. They eat cow dung. It rolls balls of dung between its strong legs. Brilliant. This is a rhinoceros beetle. This is called a longhorned beetle. Can you guess why it's a longhorn beetle? That's right. It has these long antennae that look like longhorns, like cows here in Texas. Bombardier beetle. Look at that beautiful green color. And a Colorado potato beetle, which is not the friend of many farmers and gardeners.
This guy loves to munch on potato leaves and ruin potato crops, but they still have a place in the ecosystem, even if they're not one of our favorite bugs in agriculture. Ground beetles usually hide under stones during the day. Most are brown, but some are brightly colored. Let's look at that guy. You can find all kinds of ants almost anywhere that you look. And many grasshoppers are well known for their buzzing songs. They make sounds by rubbing different parts of their bodies together, like their legs or their front legs, their arms. Beautiful, aren't they? Remember that all insects have six legs and three body parts. Oh, this is fun. Five of these animals are not insects. Do you think we can find them? Let's look. Which of these is not an insect? Is this an insect? Yes! It has six legs. Is this an insect? No, that's a seahorse. They don't have any legs. Is this an insect? Yes. And this? Yes. What about this guy? No. That's a ray. No legs. No three body parts. Beetles? Yes. Hmm. A salamander. Is that an insect? Some people think they're creepy crawly. Nope. Four legs, not six. What about this beautiful damselfly? Can you count the legs? One, two, three, four, five, six. <gasps> it must be an insect. What about this guy? Yeah, that looks like a mosquito hawk to me. Insect? Turtle, is that an insect? No. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. What do we think about that guy? Kind of looks like an insect. Kind of looks buggy. It's a lobster. Or a crawfish, maybe. Let's see. Is it an insect? Let's go through it. How many legs does it have? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can't be an insect, even if it kind of looks like one. Let's see if we got it right. There was five that were not insects. Which ones? The seahorse, the ray, the lizard, the turtle, and the lobster. We got it right! What about these guys? Are they insects? These are snails. People always call snails bugs, and bugs are usually what we call insects. So does that mean that they're insects? What do you think? Tell me using your knowledge. That's right, they're not. They don't have any legs. And they don't have three body parts. Snails are actually cephalopods. Cool. And that's the end. The ladybug and other insects. Thank you for reading with me. Bye. Hi everybody. My daughter wanted me to make sure I made a very significant correction. At the end of our wonderful book, I accidentally called snails cephalopods. <laughs> and you all know that snails are not cephalopods. They're gastropods. Their feet are their tummies. Their tummies are their feet. Cephalopods are the animals more like squids and octopus and mollusks in the ocean. They're similar type of animals, but really very different. I'm so glad 
that my daughter caught that. I'm so glad that you already knew that and you were at home going, <laughs> Casey, you ninny. But thanks for watching with us. Thanks for reading with us. Thanks for learning. And we look forward to another story time with the Young Gardeners program very soon.